Welcome back from the Mech Deck Tech. Today we have our final custom build from Duskmorn featuring Nashi Searcher in the Dark. Nashi is a 2-2 for Demir. They have Menace, and whenever they connect with a player, we get to mill that many cards. And then take any number of legendary or enchantment cards from that mill and put them back into our hand. If we don't happen to get anything back, they get a little bigger with a plus one plus one counter. So, what are we doing here? Well, one, we're trying to make it so that Nashi is unblockable, right? We want to guarantee this damage is getting through, and while the evasion from Menace is all right at doing so, we really want to up, up, those, uh, up those hits. Number two, we want some reanimator packages kind of built into the deck. You know, we are milling cards, and while most of the cards in the deck do feel like they are legendary or enchantments, some of them even being legendary enchantments. Uh, it's not enough, right? So we want to get a little bit more graveyard recursion to make sure that anything that goes to our grave isn't stuck there from the mill. And that's basically it, right? We're going to value town. We do have a few other minor things. They're going to give us bonuses for the fact that we're playing legendaries. Uh, but overall, unblockable reanimation. Bam. Let's start with that unblockability. We're going to start off with K9 Mark 1. So this is from the Universes Beyond Doctor Who set, but it's fairly cheap to pick up. It sits around like the 50 cent mark. It's a 1-1 one, one for a single blue. They have a couple different abilities, actually. They have negative, so as long as K9 Mark 1 is untapped, or other legendary creatures have Ward 1. Playing a lot of legendary creatures, passing out Ward to the whole field is nice. They also have affirmative. So for one, a blue and a tap, we get to make a legendary creature we control unblockable for the turn. Moving past K9 Mark 1, we have Thassa, Guard of the Sea. This is a 5 5 indestructible th uh, for mere 3 mana. As long as our devotion to blue is less than 5, they're not a creature, which is fine. We're going to scry it upkeep, which is nice because we're controlling the top of our deck a little bit, right? We are trying to mill it. And for one to blue, target creature we control can't be blocked for the turn. More unblockability. Not necessarily unblockable, but extra evasion, so I'm going to count it here. We're running Wonder. So Wonder is about like two bucks. They're not legendary, so once we mill them with Nashi, we're not getting them back. And they're in the grave, which is where we want them, because they're going to pass out flying to all of our creatures. Jumping way down into our enchantments. We're not running any artifacts or making us unblockable, though some do exist, and we could have the option of running them. We're jumping to Aether Tunnel. So this is an enchantment aura for one in the blue. The enchanted creature gets plus one, plus oh, and can't be blocked. So now instead of milling two when we're hitting, we're milling three. And the unblockability is just mm, chef's kiss, right? Agent of the Shadow Thieves. So this is a one in a black legendary enchantment background. So the fact that it's legendary means that even if we mill it, we can get it back with Nashi. Uh, so whenever this creature attacks, this creature being our commander, if no player has more life than the player that we're attacking, it gets plus one, plus one counter and gains death touch and indestructible. So while this isn't a guaranteed hit, it is a nice way of being like, hey, if you want to block this, I'm not losing my commander. Uh, and also, I'm getting a little bigger, so I'm accounted here as well. However, this is unblockable, right? We have Aqueous Form. So Aqueous Form is great. Single blue mana. Enchanted creature can't be blocked. Whenever that creature attacks, scry one. So again, we're manipulating the top of our deck to ensure that we're only throwing away legendaries and enchantments, or maybe wonder. Um, and really just making sure we're going to see more of our deck and have access to more of our deck than all of our opponents. Security Bypass is gonna follow that up. So Security Bypass is actually pretty sweet for us, right? We really only need Nashi to attack. Other creatures attacking is nice, but if they attack alone while equipped, not equipped, while enchanted with this aura, uh, they can't be blocked. And even if they are, you know, potentially being blocked because we're attacking with more than one thing, once they deal combat damage to a player, they get to connive, which is going to help us fill our grave and beef up Nashi. Smoke Shroud. So Smoke Shroud is two mana. Enchanted creature has flying. Whenever a ninja enters the battlefield under our control, we get to cheat Smoke Shroud from grave back to field. 
and enchant them. Well, nah, she's a ninja. So, you know, this is basically always good for us, even if we end up mailing it early, you know, future plays, whenever Nashi inevitably gets blown up or something, we play them again, and they get plus one, plus one flying automatically for free. So we're pretty happy with it. Last of our unblock ability comes in the form of another background, and that's Sword Coast Sailor. So Sword Coast Sailor is two mana, gives our commander, whenever this creature attacks alone, if no other player has more life than the player we're attacking, it can't be blocked. I said player, I meant opponent. If no opponent has more life than the opponent we're attacking, just unblockable. Hell yeah. Little dethrone type mechanic here. Let's move into that reanimator package. So we're going to start off with the polluted cistern and the dim obliette. Obliettes? I think it's obliettes. It's French. Uh, but the dim cistern is fine, right? So whatever one or more cards are put into our graveyard from our library, each opponent will lose one for each card type among those cards. So a little bit of burn to go with our self mill. And the Dim Obliette is going to, whenever it's unlocked, mill three cards, and then we get to return a creature from Grave to Battlefield. So, Recursion and Burn for doing what we're already doing, we're kind of here for it. Necromancy. So Necromancy is an enchantment. It's going to basically let us grab a creature from Grave to Field. If we do it at flash speed, we do have to sacrifice that creature. Uh, otherwise, it's basically just like, hey, as long as Necromancy's on the field, the creature gets to stay. Kaya's Ghost Form. So not quite uh, reanimation, but it is a little bit of protection, right? So whenever the uh, Enchant's Permanent dies or is put into exile, it just comes right back. We have yet another room with the Defiled Crypt slash Cadaver Lab. So Cadaver Lab unlocks to return a creature from grave to hand, but for one mana, you know, it's not bad value. The Filed Crypt at four mana says whenever one of our cards leave our graveyard, we get to create a 2-2 two -two Black Horror Enchantment creature token. The ability will only trigger once a turn, but generally speaking, things are only leaving our grave once a turn. So I think it's all right. We're, of course, also running Animate Dead. Effectively necromancy, but not at flash speed. It is a little bit of a, hey, your creature's always going to be a smidge weaker, but... It's pretty solid in any reanimator package, so I'm happy to have it here. Moving up into more spell singing variety of reanimation, we're running Victimize. So, effectively, sack a creature, cheat two creatures back, you know, you love it. As well as reanimate. So, single mana, sorcery speed, choose a creature in grave, bring them back, we lose some life equal to their mana value, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Sticking with the reanimator theme, but not necessarily reanimating, we are running Tormod, the Desecrator. This is a 4-2, so whenever one or more cards leave our grave, we get to create a tapped 2-2 zombie. A little bit of fodder for us. Sir Conrad the Grim. So whenever another creature dies, or a creature is put in a graveyard from anywhere, other than the battlefield, or a creature leaves a grave, Sir Conrad is going to deal 1 damage to each opponent. So this is going to trigger for each, right? So this is pretty nice. We should have a pretty constant flow of things both going into our grave and popping back out. Sir Conrad himself is also legendary, which works with Nashi, right? Oh no, I milled Sir Conrad. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. He's right here. Emery, Lurker of the Lock, can also feed our reanimation package while they aren't reanimation per se directly. They do let us cast some artifacts from the grave, so it's art it's, it's reanimation adjacent. I'm gonna I'm gonna count it here. And last of our reanimator package is Ayara, first of Lockswing. So three black for a two three. Whenever they or another black creature enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent will lose one life. We're gonna gain one life, and we could pay we could not pay anything. We could tap them down. Focus, Josh. You got this. Uh, we could sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. Uh, which is going to work with Sir Conrad, right? They're a power couple. But guys, those are the major premises of the deck. As always, we do try and keep each card under $10 just to like keep it relatively budget. Most of these cards are honestly under a dollar. There's a ton more to the deck. We do have some other things to care about legendaries, such as Heroes Podium and such. But, you know, if you want to take a look at the full deck list, as always, there is a link to it in the description down below. 
If you felt like you enjoyed this content, got a little bit of value, want to see this channel grow, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, you know, do all the doobly doos, you know, feed the algorithm. Um, but next week, I think we are going to start up on some of these Marvel secret layers. I'm going to start with Iron Man, unless, you know, anyone leaves a comment saying that they'd like to see one of the other ones before him. Uh, but we will get to each of the Marvel secret layer uh, potential commanders and like do full deck builds for them. As always, keeping a budget with the exception of any of the cards that come in the secret layer, uh, which I think makes sense because if you're picking up the secret layer uh, for Iron Man, right, he comes with a bunch of cards. So obviously you would have access to those cards for that build. But I'm Mechanized Minion, a.k.a. the Energy King, wishing you good luck with your builds.